Hi, this is Summer with Summer's Tips and Stitches, and today, um, this video a lot of you thought would be about your the crochet bag lining that I was going to make, um, which I have done. However, um, it needs a lot of editing, and um, my husband's working. He works nights, sleeps days. So I made this video to pop out on Thursday, and whenever he's done editing the other, I'll just load it up that day. I won't wait for a Monday, Thursday, or Saturday. I have a few video ideas that I've been kicking around, and this is kind of like a little bit of a filler because of the editing. So, um, I am going to open subscription boxes. The first one is my Knit Crate, which I'm very excited about. Now, I tried to get a preview of the color. Um, I did not try very hard. I opened a link and it showed some pictures of things. I didn't do a lot of reading, so I have no idea. Um, I did start to look at the proper pineapple of Holly's. And I think she had like a bluish, lavenderish kind. So, I don't know. I'll see what mine is. I've kind of been waiting to see what I would have compared to everybody else. Okay, I taped it, unopened the taping. It matches my knit crate. In fact, I feel like it matches one I already got. Let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna say it's like greenish vari variations, a green vari variant. Okay. Your, I, <laughs> our choices were green or blue. I am going to say it reminds me a lot of this green color that we got before, but this is a, a fingering weight. I've never made anything with it, just stuck it up there all pretty. Okay, so, oh my goodness, look at all those beautiful colors. Kind of makes me feel like Easter or spring. Oh my gosh, and I love it. I have something to crochet. Okay, you guys, I've been so bummed because all I have to work on, I can't think of something to work on, which is part of this video. I'm going to be working on the low cowl, the crochet along from Debbie and Karen, um, and I will work on that just a little bit every day. But that's something that I usually like to do straight through, so I was kind of saving it for Saturday. But look at this. I think this is the gro crochet pattern. Isn't that pretty? So I've kind of been struggling with what to make. I've been making those baskets. As you see, I made one here, which is two st strands of cotton. And I made, well, you can't see, but you watch my other video. I made that pink one out of the chunky Karen cake. And I ma I'm making another one right now that I'm just about finished with. It's a double strand cotton, just like this. But instead of doing the double or half double, I'm doing single crochet, and it is much tighter. Um, so I decided, you know what, because I made those two, I was going to make two more. One for each of my kids and one for Han. So that I'll have four, and I'm going to use them as Easter baskets. Because I was like, what am I going to do with those? So I'm going to make, I'm going to finish up this one that I'm working on now, make one more, set those aside for Easter. But I was like, ah, I don't really like doing them. I'm not a fan of the baskets. I don't know what to do with them. Um, that's why I thought, well, I'll use them for Easter. So I got one more of those to do. But now I think I can make this. So this is called the Scalene. Scalene reinterpreted the shape for shawls and scarves. Ooh. Okay, and here I believe is the knitted one. Now, I can tell you what, I love that photo. Look how happy that gal is. And she's got all this lace work on her shawl or her scarf. I love that. I'm not going to make it, though, because I'm not a fan of knitting. After that, my knit crate from last, that pink one is in there. Um, so this is, I'm skipping the Belita. So if you are one of my subscribers, you're going to have to find someone else who wants to chat about Belita. Because I'm giving that one a break. But man alive, it's pretty. And she looks so happy to be wearing it. Um, Let's see here. Ooh, there's a graph. Hey, Flinny. This is what I'm going to make. This is a Kiri Fitzgerald. Um, Can I tell you, I burnt my tongue with dinner. And it hurts. Okay, 
And this is her shawl. I wanted to look at a nice picture. She's from Australia. Oh, no, she submitted her first pattern to an Australian magazine. Maybe she's Australian. Oh, nope, she is. She's based out of Brisbane. Ooh, maybe Gypsy Rose knows her. <laughs> Just teasing. Um, <laughs> wow, there's lots of rose. It's called Belle Askew. A combination of basic stitches shines against the not-so-basic shape. Uneven sides create a skewed beauty of a shawl. I really want to see how it's laid out. We don't really get to see that. There's a bobble stitch in there. And um, double crochet. What we can see of it really is this gal wearing it. I'm pretty excited. I'm totally making it. I'm going to work on my locale and I'm going to start pumping this out. I'm very, very excited. Um, my tongue hurts though, friends. And, oh, here is some information about crochet designer. Look at that yarn. Wow. I want that one. What is this one in? Oh, the sock month. Oh, but look at these socks. Look at those. <whistles> I like them. Okay, sock pattern. All right, well, friends, <clears throat> I'm really happy about the knit crate. I'm going to crochet this pattern. There's my flanny again. Um, in this beautiful colorway. Ooh. I think it will look nice. I like it. And then you know what? Maybe, because this is a worsted weight, maybe I'll rip out my knitting for like a fourth time and make one in the pink too. You know what, folks? I might just make two of these. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so Knit Crate success. Oh, let me tell you about the yarn if you haven't watched everyone else do one. Um, this is Auden Wool's Halo DK. Oh, it's a DK. I think the other was a worsted. Well, maybe it'll just be a little bigger. And it's 50% alpaca, 30% merino, 20% nylon. Um, so check out, I've seen that, I want to say the people I know that typically do videos about these is Ella No Catchy Name, Scraptastic Yarn, Hooked on Owl is an ambassador. I've checked her out, but I haven't seen her do a video in a while. Of course, there's this one. Holly, the proper pineapple. So, yeah, that is my knit crate. I'm in love. I'm in love with the knit crate. Man, I love my knit crate. So, now, something that I'm not as much in love with that I'm going to chat with you folks about. Jimmy Bean. And you know what? I realized what I was thinking about. I think there's a liquor that's called Jimmy something. And anyway, so this was month one of my three month. And as you all saw from a lot of other folks, you get these super cute little sheepies, river washed, bonbon skeins of like, I don't remember how many meters, 22.5 meters, which my dad had figured out was roughly 24 yards. And then, da 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 da, and just so you know, Jane, my little card came tucked in here nice and deep. Um, Jane's was poking out of her bag and she almost sliced it, or maybe she did. Uh, they want you to make this poof right there. They want you to stuff it with a comforter. Um, you know what? I'm really, I just don't know if I want to make it. Like I've said before, this is as far as I am. Not very far, am I, friends? And I feel like I've got a bazillion of these little things. Now, I thought in this video, just for the heck of it, I'm going to show a bunch of these in the in the video for you. I'm going to pull them up, tell you the color, and I'm going to hold it up there and show you. Because I'm going to tell you, some of these colors, I love them. I was thinking about making an extensive... Okay, first let me show you some of the colors, and then I'm going to tell you some options if you don't want to make the poof. So these are my two favorite, and I'm going to hold these up right away because this is one of the reasons I wanted to do this. This is called turquoise. Look at there. Beautiful. And this one is called green agate. Now, friends, I am holding up a different skein, but it looks exactly the same to me. Do you see that? I don't know who they're tricking. I have looked at them under natural light. I've looked at them under my light over here. I'm looking at them now in the camera. They look identical to me. So it'd be really cool if somebody could flash up their green agate 
to see if maybe they made a mistake on mine. But anyway, green agate and what would I say the other one was? Turquoise, which I think they're both turquoise. And then this one is called Rhine. <clears throat> yeah, this one definitely looks different. This one, I love this one. Danube. There it is. This one is called Wheaton. This one is Mississippi. Look at that. It's kind of an orangish, like a, like a, what are those little crab lobster things called that are kind of orangish? Or is that Louisiana? I don't know. The Mississippi have crawdaddies. Morganite, kind of an orangish, peachy one. Um, I'm only going to do a few more of these, folks, just in case you're getting bored. Larimar, because some of the names are getting hard. Let me see if I can just find one of my favorites. Ooh, I, I really love this one. This one is kind of a reddish with kind of like a blue fuzz to it. Gains. Do you see that? Isn't that crazy? Mm. Have I told you guys that my tongue hurts? Okay. Um, Tora, Tourmaline. Tourmaline. I don't know. I love that one. Okay, so anyway. This is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, my friends, I'm scrapping the poof. I'm sorry, Jimmy Bean. I just don't have the time or energy for that, and I want to use something with these yarns. So this is what I was thinking. One of you lovely yarn friends said that there is a pattern on Ravelry, which I'll put a link in the description to, and that one is a lemonade scarf. It is a $2.99, or pound, maybe three pounds, Hmm, I was looking at a lot of patterns recently. Okay, so I don't remember how much it is. It's either two or three dollars or pounds. Um, and that, you know what, to be honest, I mean, no offense to the designer. I think her name is like Fiona. Super cute. You want to pay the money. But my point is you could make a fun scarf. Just pull out a color, crochet a bunch of rows. If you, oh, my daughter just knocked over her desk chair. Um, if you're particular, figure out how many rows you can get per thing. Maybe do an X stitch for some. Maybe do a mesh stitch. Just shake it up. And so I'm thinking about doing that. Just making one of those long, beautiful, multicolored coat. Kind of like Joseph's coat, but a scarf. So that is option one. If you don't want to do the poof. And you got a million of these. I think I'm up to like 45 of these. So I'm thinking about that. And then... In order to avoid my OCD, I'm just going to reach in, grab one, crochet. I'm not going to worry about putting what colors next to what and this and that because it's going to get me crazy. So I'm thinking about that option, in which case I'm, I'm kind of happy about this if I'm going to do that project. The other thing that I'm thinking of doing is two projects kind of in one. You could make yourself a whole bunch of dishcloths. Now, I'm going to find a pattern that I shared quite a while ago. Debbie the Canadian Crotcheter shared it. I'm going to reshare it. And it's three dishcloths. They make kind of uh, little flowers. They're beautiful. But because this is a cotton acrylic blend, I believe. Of course, I grabbed the one that I already took the label off. Um, I can't find it now. Cotton acrylic. 70 cotton, 30 acrylic. You could make little dishcloths, a bunch of those flower dishcloths, and rotate between the, the colors. Or then that got me thinking, what if I made a, a granny square? I'm not sure what kind of granny square right now, but just take one of these, make a square. Take another one, make a square. Sew them all together. Maybe I'll take some of the light colors, or maybe I'll just sew them together and make a real big mishmash blanket. So I'm really thinking about that because these all go, you know, so th that's what I'm thinking. Lemonade scarf on Ravelry, dishcloths, which I'll put a link in the description to that dishcloth pattern that I used quite a while ago. If you want to just look for it yourself um, without going through the dish and see the dishcloths, I would say probably in June or July, maybe July or August, somewhere in the summer, <laughs> 
I reviewed some cotton. I made the dishcloths out of different types of cotton. One of those, um, I want to say lollipop, that's not the word. Little dollop, one, a little dollop out of a cotton cake, and then I made it out of something else. I don't remember. It was floppy, though. I wasn't real happy with it. Anyway, a couple different cottons. And so I did a review. But if you want to just check that video out, and I can put a link in the description to that video, there is a link to that pattern, but also you'll get to see what those dishcloths look like, and some of them are real beautiful. So that's what I'm thinking. Either doing the dishcloths and choose my own pattern, or using these to make some kind of square or shape and sew a bunch of them together and make a big blanket. Um, and then, of course, there's the poof that comes with it. And, friends, I think I'm going to discontinue the Jimmy Bean after this. I just wanted to try a little subscription boxes here and there, talk about them with you, um, so that you can decide if you, you know, if you want to wait and see how many I go through uh, to see if you want to try one. Um, so I love the Knit Crate. Every month, I love it. Whether or not I make the pattern, I love the yarn. I love the Knit Crate. I love it. Jimmy Bean, I'm finally getting a little excited about. Up till now, not been pumped because I didn't know what to do with these and I didn't want to make the poof. But now I'm getting excited about either doing that really long scarf or that blanket. Um, the next one that I'm going to try is the Mary Maxim because I've heard from um, Ross from the Smell Great Yarn, Smell Great Guy or Smell Yarn. Sorry, Ross. Um, I heard Mary Maxim was awesome. T Dolls, Christy Cook. She loves the Mary Maxim too. And there was somebody else, maybe it was one of my yarn friend subscribers, mentioned the Mary Maxim. So I think that's the next one I'm going to try. So yeah, that is my subscription box. And that's kind of like how I, I'm going to tell you what you guys, as you know, I'm just feeling out of sorts because I burnt my tongue, but I've just been feeling in a crochet law, like what I'm going to make. I don't know what to make. And um, yeah, now I'm feeling pumped because I'm going to, I'm totally going to do it, guys. I'm going to make the DK scarf that they have in here for crochet. And then I'm going to make it, I'm going to frog out that knitting pattern. The one that's held double. I'm going to frog that and I'm going to make that into one of those scarves too. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm, what I'm up to. Um, like I said, as soon as my husband can get that lining um, edited, because basically what I did is I made one really, really long video. And I just want to remind you all, do not expect wonders with this. I have had no official sewing lessons. I just watched my mom for many years sew. I got my own sewing machine, and I just, like, fake it till I make it. And my linings are a fake it till I make it type of thing. Um, one thing I will like to say, do want to say is I did a lot of YouTube watching before I decided to whether or not to sew my yarn to the fabric. Um, and I decided it was okay. And I stuck worsted weight yarn, cotton, yeah, worsted weight and cotton, acrylic worsted weight, under my sewing machine and it's done fine. The only thing I suggest, if you don't want to wait to watch me do my lining and you're already a master sewer and you just want to see, is be very careful about pulling. With regular fabric you can pull, but with yarn when you pull it, it stretches. So you have to make sure you're being very careful to not pull it because then you stretch your yarn bigger. And now I'm going to tell you that in the video too, so I'm not sure why I told you that now. Also, real quick, I wanted to answer some video questions that friends have given me. This hat, I made a tutorial for called Holy Cats. That's a lot. No, I did not make a tutorial. I watched a tutorial, and this is Debbie's floppy pom-pom that I put on top of it. But this hat, I made quite a few with Holy Cats, that's a lot of hats, and I sold them in my craft show. So that should be like, I want to say, a November video. It's somebody else's tutorial, but then I modified the top, and then I made a video about how I modified it. So that is this hat. I don't remember what it's called. But basically, it is a two crochets and a front post double crochet, like that. And then you come up and you taper them. Up, and then I put that crazy pom-pom that Debbie makes. Um, this, some few of you have asked about these. I have very limited information about these. 
my mom gave these to my sister to give to me around Christmas time. Um, she felt, and she was right, that I could put these, some hats on them, and put them in my video. And that's exactly what I do. There's some kind of decoration that she got at a store, or maybe from someone in Sturgeon Bay. I don't know. My sister didn't tell me. So I have one of them here with this hat. And then, yeah, I have a shorter one right here with that other hat. Now this is that same hat, friends, but this one I modified the top and did not put a beanie on. Because the video tutorial, the gal actually cinches the top. This hat is cute. I forgot how cute it was. So I put this hat on this little ball. And that one usually goes up there with my, with my uh, Hobby Lobby head. I'm going to show you here. Here she is. This hat I made last year. This is the first pom-pom I've ever made. And this is, uh, I love this yarn, purple, lavender, with a fun fur that one of my knitting buddies had said, does anybody want this yarn? I said, yes. And I wish I had watched Dolly's tip from Moonfire Crafted. She gave a tip. And I wish I would have known that. You, if you want to know this tip, head on over to Dolly. I'll put a link in the description because I'm not going to tell you her tip. But I wish I would have known her tip when I made this hat. And I didn't. And this is my beautiful head. This is actually the second head I had, have had. The first head my daughter destroyed. And then I got this one for my birthday. Okay, so. Mom, I did not destroy it. It was my head. Okay, so <laughs> we're having a fight. Wait. What? You did too? You were like poking on her. You dropped her. You broke okay. her nose. Okay, okay, okay. I got my own little head for my wig, and then Flynn destroyed oh. it in the basement with a sludge little thing. Okay, and so you're right. I bought her the head for her wig. She had a really awesome wig for Halloween. And then my son Flynn destroyed it. He took it down to the basement and hit it with a sledgehammer. So that is unsettling, isn't it? Okay, another question somebody asked. I was crocheting. Um. Oh, you know that corner to corner video I did? Actually, there's two questions with that. One of you lovely folks wanted to know what this yarn was. I'm going to pause it and see if I can find the ball band. Okay, this is the yarn. I bought quite a few skeins of this because while I was in Michael's, I thought it looked like a Caucasian girl's skin tone. Or maybe I'm just kind of a pink person. Maybe I'm pink. Because I thought it matched. <laughs> but then when I got out um, I felt like no maybe it doesn't maybe I'm just pinker than most people um, this is a Vanish Choice yarn that's all it says Lion Brand Vanish Choice and in the colorway of pink um, I made my pig a few videos back I made an Amigurumi pig I made it all by myself I didn't even use a pattern my husband put me gave me a challenge and I took it so I have a lot of this left because I thought I was gonna make Amigurumi dolls and I did actually make one doll with it um, so that was a question that somebody wanted to know was what was this yarn? Vanish Choice, I got it at Michael's. I want to say they're having some kind of deal where you buy two, get one free or something like that. Um, I think those are the que oh, see, oh, the other question. Somebody had asked, do you have to keep changing your hooks when you're making that corner to corner? Now, I just wanted to clarify. A few videos back, I did a YouTube tutorial video on how to crochet a corner to corner. And because I wanted to keep the interest of my regular viewers that already know how to do a corner to corner, I thought along with doing the corner to corner, I would switch out crochet hooks and talk about them as I was going, like what I liked about that one and then what I liked or didn't like about the next. So that is what happened. So I'm sorry for those of you that were confused. You just take your hook and crochet away. I was switching out to kind of kill two birds with one stone, so to speak, and so that's what I was doing. I want to say those are the most recent questions that I get continually that I've kind of been just like thinking, oh, I'll say that in my next video, and I forgot. <gasps> Hats, hat stands, pink yarn. That's that. 
Okay, folks, well, this kind of turned out to be a pretty good video. I thought I was just going to talk about subscription boxes. Uh, and it turns out I talked about a lot of stuff. And I am super excited for my Saturday video. I hope to have at least one shawl done. But I need to be working on my locale. I've got a good idea on that, and I need to just get working on it. <sighs> Although I think I have till April. Don't worry, folks. I think you have till April. It's just I feel like I want to get it done so I'm not, like, last minute freaking out because I've never entered a locale. And thanks to all y'all who have been asking me to be your Ravelry friends. Okay, so quick recap for the description box. There's going to be a link to my cotton review because that will also have a picture, a video about those dishcloths that I want to make maybe with those. Also, there's going to be a link to the lemonade scarf on Ravelry. That is something if you are getting these Jimmy Bean um, yarns and you, or if you bought the pack, because I think Holly said she had one, and you don't want to make the poof, you can make the lemonade scarf. I'm also going to put a link in the description to the tutorial again for that hat um, that I made. And then I think that is all I'm... Oh, I'm going to link Dolly from Moonfire Crafted because she gives you an excellent tip about fun fur. And I'd like for you to go over and listen to her chat about it because she's way cute. And um, yeah, that's it. And then I'm going to do that stash challenge. Um, I'm going to organize my stash because that's one of the questions and I keep thinking to myself I need to organize my stash because I'm not very happy with how it is. And so that will get me in the in the in in gear, I'll get my bum in gear and organize it cuz right now I'm kind of just sticking things wherever I want them. Um yeah, so that's all. Thanks for watching and subscribing. Thank you for sharing my videos. Hit that notification bell if you want to be alerted for every time I make one of these crazy videos. And until then, happy crafting. Bye.